No, all good. Okay, I'll, I'll get started, guys. Um, we're going to switch things around a bit tonight. So uh, Nick's going to do his part first of all, uh, and then we'll just basically just do the rest of the, the meeting in reverse. So um, won't muck around. Won't, won't muck around. But just uh, just double checking. You guys can see my screen. Yep. 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 Cool. Just going to yep. pop you all on. Pop you all on mute for now. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Welcome along. Uh, thanks for again. Thanks for uh, joining in. Um, it's been, it has been a couple of weeks since our last meeting, uh, and again, we'll we'll just for now we'll just look at keeping these there uh, fortnightly uh, until we have some until we get some clarity, I guess, around uh, when we're moving out of things and where. So we'll uh, discuss that more in, uh, in the future. But uh, look, we'll just take you through what we're going to do tonight. So. Uh, Nick's going to be going over the, um, the anticipation task for the breakdowns. Hopefully uh, enough of you have had an opportunity to have a look at that. Uh, he'll also, he's also got a couple of uh, new positioning drills to introduce, which is cool. Um, then we'll go around the, around the tracks, just be able to catch up with each other. Uh, cover off a few law questions, a little bit of general business, and uh, should be wrapped up around 8 o'clock. Um, and then we've got another coat for those keen to kick on. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you, uh, we'll talk more about that one later. Uh, but Nick, if you are ready to take over, I can um, transfer across and lend you the reins. Yes, wait, you hear me now? Clear. Okay. Um, I thought, um, I didn't want to, well, I'll take as long as we need to take, but I wasn't anticipating spending a huge amount of time on this. Just firstly, I'm interested if anybody's got any feedback on the process of this, um, watching these clips. Is there too many clips? Is there not enough clips? Um, you know, like, is there anything that's, that doesn't make sense or is difficult about it just in terms of the process? Um, so I just thought I'd open that up for that to start with. You're all on, you're all on mute, by the way, so you all need to unmute yourself prior to um, speaking. I must admit, Nick, um, I only watched probably half of it. Um, 12 minutes was probably a bit, bit long for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I probably um, yeah, watched probably five, six minutes of it of worth watching. Yeah, it's probably my my thoughts on it as well. Yeah, I just watched, um, yeah, probably the half of it. Um, and, yeah, and just, yeah, maybe even if there was in a group different games so that you were... Looking at different teams, you know, you did four or five or one, and that, and maybe that's even the instructions, you know, do four or five or one, and then jump onto another clip because I think it's quite good to get what different teams are doing. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, that's a that's a good point. Although the one thing I would say is I've deliberately kept it at a s single game now because uh, is Tiana on the call? I can't see her. No. Well, one of the ones I gave her before we started, because I was trying with her, she was my guinea pig first, uh, she came back and made a um, an observation going, I find that one really boring because England was so dominant. And I was looking at, well, I'm, that's great. Like, she's able to make a, a, like a, it wasn't the fact that she said it was boring, but she was able to, like, process, okay, England are really dominant here. So she was, that was sort of, so that's part of how we referee a proper game. So if we jump around, we jump, often we look at clips like, it's almost like looking for perfect examples. And in, in a game of rugby, we don't get many perfect examples. So if we just cherry pick them out, it sort of, I reckon it has limited use. So while some of the, I'll acknowledge some of them is poor footage and you look at the clip and go, why am I looking at that? But that's, isn't that just kind of like the nature of a game? Like, there's not much going on there. We'll play on. Um, so I take your point, um, Sam, but I'd suggest we'll just we'll try and achieve that by doing a different game each week. Although maybe we could do maybe I could give you two halves. So two halves of two different games. So you are actually watching, if you want to, five minutes of worth of tackles from one game and five from another. Um, but I don't. I, uh, I don't want to cherry pick. If you know what I mean. Um, okay, so that's a fair piece of feedback that in terms of the length of it. It's, um, I kind of wasn't sure what people would have an appetite for, so I just 
um, I just kind of chucked it all in there from a game and see what people have to say of it. Um, I, I, has anybody? Oh, sorry. Has he, I, 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 I'm, I think the length is good if you're practiced at it, but um, I guess my thing was that if you know anyone doing it for the first time, you know, like a shorter period to learn it, like it, it seems less intimidating. Like when you open the video and it's 12 minutes long, I think it makes people like, oh, this seems too hard. But if it was, you know, there, there were some maybe like beginner ones that were quicker and shorter just so that you learn the technique of what we're trying to do. And then when you're more practiced, I, I agree that 12 minutes would be really good because you'd be able to understand that whole of game thing. But I suppose if, they, if you're doing it for the first time, you don't really have the, uh, you, you haven't de like developed the technique of doing it. It's similar to the, the drills that you did, like I thought it was really good because you break them down at the start and you just do one or two at the start and then you slowly build it up. I think similar to, to doing this, that, you know, going from nothing to suddenly looking at 12 minutes and looking at every single breakdown as a big jump, if there was like yep. a halfway step to get people on board. <clears throat> yeah, that's a fair point. Um, uh, there's no pressure to watch as any of the, but it, I mean, maybe there's some opportunity there to pick out some good, some um, good examples for people that are less experienced because it's, but I'm not trying to, the purpose of this exercise is not coaching the decisions that you're making. Like it's not about, here's an example of a tackler not rolling away or um, someone not releasing or whatever. It's just to, but you know, it's fair because it's, and it was really, to be honest, it was aimed at um, people towards the sort of the, the, the panel one, panel two end. And then I had a discussion with, with Cam and he said, well, why don't we spread it to everybody? So everybody's got an opportunity and it may not be right for everybody, but um, yeah, but that's good feedback. I appreciate that. Has anybody from doing it made any sort of overall observations that helps them like identify early? Like is it, there was a couple of good ones that came out last week around a good carry or the other week thinking about what was a good carry or, and things like that. Is, is, does anybody kind of come up with anything through watching them and go, that's useful to share? Because I think that's the purpose of it. If we're sitting there and we sit there and watch whether we watch two minutes of it, four minutes, or all 12 minutes of it, I think we want to really challenge ourselves at the end of it and go, righto, if I wasn't able to identify something that was useful to overview all of those, I should be going through it again um, and trying to figure out what that is. And I guess the one, one tip I would give you is... Um, if you're struggling to find anything, is go through and have a look at who who gets on the ball first. So go through and watch the series of clips or the next with the last ones or the next ones, and just watch them with a with a cue of who gets on the. Just watch for who gets on the ball first. Now that doesn't mean that person's going to win the whether it's the attack or the defence. They're going to necessarily win the ball or the penalty. But I, I don't know, just try that as a place to start and then see what you notice. When we do this next, I'd really like to challenge everybody hard to try and have something they could share. That's like, oh, this is one thing I noticed that was useful for me. I might, I'd suggest, um, Nick, that uh, they come into it. We just, uh, we then go into breakout groups. Uh, so we're in smaller groups then and, and yeah, cool. yeah, everyone's got um, something to have a chat in around that in that small group environment. Yeah, that's a good call. And so maybe, um, I mean, I was just wanting to really get clear on the process now, make sure everybody's happy with that. But yeah, that's a, that's a good call. Like, so next time maybe we'll, uh, we'll break out and we'll have some discussions and then report back on what some, rather than me just telling you what I think, um, I'd rather hear what people are noticing in their own words, because we all have to kind of find our own way of doing it. Uh, yeah, for me, when I look back on some of those clips, particularly from last time, was actually um, how many rucks that teams actually did attack. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, um, compared to what, for, for, for what we see on a normal Saturday game is that the lower the greys, they tend to attack every single ruck. So you've got to kind of be, be, be there or thereabouts. But as you go through the greys, you, you can see the top teams, they like to pick. Which, which ones they want to try and isolate and try and attack a bit more than trying to attack every single one. 
That's that's a good observation. Um, I would say that at the top level, in some games, you're absolutely right. In others, like for instance, when I'm going through and cutting these clips, I'm just in the process of cutting Hurricanes Chiefs, so, uh, some clips out of that. And where most of the games I've cut clips from so far had about 40 or 50 contestable rucks which is still, that's still a quarter of, there's about 200 a game. And of them, there was about 40 or 50 that were contestable. Um, well, this particular game is 83. So what you'll tend to find is, um, I went to Hurricanes Chiefs because I knew it would be a bit like that. Any team that's got, A, some good loose forwards, but also B, when they're playing a team who's got pretty attacking backs, they um, they go pretty hard at the breakdown. Even if they may not be trying to win it, they're just trying to make a mess of it. Um, so, but yeah, yeah. Look, I would also say that some of the club games I've ref haven't been contested a lot either. But I mean, when they do get contested, it's not it's you know skill level and body types a bit different, so it is more difficult. Yeah, it just makes a lot more to look um, to look for. Yeah, as well, particularly if the game's quite slow and you do get up in a lot of rucks and and. Um, Everyone does tend to try and attack, 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 attack. Yep. Yep. And you're right, a slow game. So that's a good um, tactical observation. So a slow game is going to give time for the defence to have a crack, isn't it? So you're going to get more of those. Um, that's good. Uh, good observation. Anybody got any else they want to add? We'll go back well, through when the next. Oh, sorry. Who's that? Me just talking yeah. again. I didn't. I didn't want to jump in early because I feel like I ho hogged the conversation. But something that I probably <laughs> haven't looked at before when I was doing these type of things was um, looking at the not the immediate defenders, but the the ones around it were quite determinative of how well they would attack that breakdown. So kind of the positioning of those defenders probably a little bit wider, um, whether they'll get whether they're heading towards the breakdown or they're holding there. Um, you know, you could, even as soon as they hit, kind of their body positions for me in that game determined whether they would have a, a really good chance at pushing through that breakdown or whether it was just going to be the one person over, the, over it trying to get the ball, which is something that I probably, even in refereeing, don't take really any notice of. But um, as I got further through the minutes on that clip, it became more determinative for how well the breakdown would be contested. Uh, so that's, I really like this. So um, what do you think, so it's it's quite common you'll get, in any game of rugby, you'll often get one person contesting the breakdown because teams, what, what do you think it tells you about their, so those other players you're looking at, their intention, what do you think that tells you, Sam, about that team's tactics at the breakdown? Yes, I think it, yeah, what kind of, for me, well, you could tell at different parts and as you flip between different parts of the game, whether that, like, a, there was a focus of attacking the breakdown or not. And so, I guess because I usually focus on, you know, if, if you go into a tackle and there's two or three players there, they're immediately there to get it. But, um, yeah, if they were urgent on trying to get back around it to attack it, uh, and I think it differed where they were on the field as well, I started to notice. So, yeah, change that. They either had an, a mindset for attacking the ball or they had a mindset of just um, leaving it in to try to get the, the quick turnover and not um, suck up their defenders, I suppose. Yeah, so I reckon that's an excellent observation because that really is is signalling and it's something you're noticing that's signalling the intent of one team. Going, right, oh, well, if they're... Like often, they'll someone will just throw one player in to make a mess. But if they if they got two or three players around it, that look like they're keen to have a crack. That tells me pretty early on these this team are gonna they're gonna go hard at the breakdown today. They're prepared to put more people in. Um, the other players periphery to the breakdown. Um, so not just the wider defenders, but what do you think? Anybody want to tell me what the the attackers other than the than the ball carrier itself could give us cues on? <laughs> what, 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 what might we notice about what the, what they're doing or where they are that might tell us what might happen next? They might be setting pods up, uh, <clears throat> which would then determine where we're going to 
position ourselves in anticipation of that pod and the next breakdown, the next movement away from that. Yeah, so if you see a pot of forward setting up, that gives you a good indication of where it might go next. Hmm. <coughs> what about when the ball carrier goes into contact? What are we... Because we don't want to be just... Because I think what Sam's just pointed out here <coughs> is early on, we don't want to be zeroing in on tackler, tackled player, releasing, rolling away. We've got to kind of start with a wider view and zero in on that afterwards. So in our wider view, as the initial collision's happening, so we might have noticed the defence have some numbers they might be throwing, looking like they want to get involved. What about what we're seeing from the attack that gives us a hint of whether we're likely to have a contest or not? This see is which way the uh, backs are moving and see where the halfback's positioning himself. A go earlier than that even. Like, so we're talking contact. We haven't had a contest yet. We're trying to decide. We see a ball carrier running. He's about to be tackled. Is this likely to be a contest or not? Sam's noticed the defence. Look like there's two or three players looking to go and hunting. What, 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 what do we need to see from the attack to tell us whether there's likely to be a contest or not? The jackal, jackalow. Next from, player, the, any, from the attack. Hmm. If there's any close player, the supporting player, player is to the ball carrier. Exactly. So that's, we're taking a wide view. We go, shit, we're noticing there's some whole lot of guys look like they want to hunt. And we're taking a wide, wider view of the attacking going, Jesus, three or four guys steaming in here look like they're going to win a clean out of here. So we can have a pretty good crack at understanding what might happen next, which we're not always going to get right. But if we can get it right 80% of the time, it makes the next bit easier, doesn't it? Well, it kind of gives you an idea on um, what sort of position you should, you should be looking at, whether it's going to be a quick turnover or or easy attacking win, and then you can come, kind of move on with the attacking team. Correct. We were, we were pulling teeth to start with, but we're starting to get some good stuff now. <laughs> Gappy's trying to say something, but it's all I can see is the moustache moving. He's, <laughs> He's still it. muted. Yeah, that's a good place for him, actually. Not muted. Yeah. <laughs> Where'd the moustache come from, mate? Um, well, where most of them come from. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Going well, Nick. Carry on, mate. It's good. <laughs> well, I, I, like I said, I don't want to... I don't want to do this any more than, well, I think we're getting our head around the process, so we'll get a bit more focused in our chat next time by doing what um, Cam was saying, by getting into some uh, into some discussion groups and reporting back on. But that's the way we want to be thinking, like what we've just been talking about now. Having a bit of a look around the bigger picture as somebody runs into contact and start to try and think about what are some things here that tell me, because if we think about what does that mean for me? If there's a breakdown 20 metres away from me that's about to happen, and I'm Sam, and I notice the defence look like they're hunting. Do I hang hang ten metres back, or what do I do? Uh, you want to get in there and get involved. Exactly. Exactly. And if I wait till that contest starts happening before I decide I need to get involved, how good a position am I likely to be in? You're gonna get yelled at by the players or the spectators. Yeah. Versus, if you can see, I'm twenty metres away, and I think this is gonna the attacker walking over this. Maybe I can just cruise a little bit here and get ready for the next thing. Um. Hang up by well, the first, first or second five and wait for the next play. Well, that, that'd be pretty wide, but yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> You're on to it. Okay, um, well, unless anybody's got any more questions about that, I just thought I'd introduce the next couple of um, uh, training training drill clips for those that are interested and then um, and, and, and just answer any, have any chat about that we want to. Has anybody got anything else about the tackle exercise? No. Okay. So I'll just uh, hang on. Well, before I get on to this one, um, so anybody got anything they want to raise about the the drills I introduced last time that that are out there on those clips? Um, anything they've noticed or anything they've um, they've added to it themselves that they found useful? Okay. Sweet, that's fine. So what we did for the first series was that was all about your arriving options and then your transitioning options, but we were doing it with one phase. So what I've tried to do this time is, uh, is move on to more like what happens in real life where we apply those theories, but we're going to string together a number of phases as like would happen in a game. So we're still going to stick with the same uh, philosophies of we want to arrive around about um, square with the the last feet of the attacking team, 
We still want to get our inside foot up and we still want to be flat enough that we could step into the defensive line, but not so flat that we can't then step back in behind the halfback. So I'll just share my screen and I'll just quickly show you my um, high quality um, filming with my phone. Uh, I'll mute that. So what this one is, can everybody see that? Can everybody see my screen? Uh, not yet, mate. It said share it. Why does it not come out? It's a green green button share. There we go. You got it. Um, I won't go through all this crap because you can watch it yourself. Um, so this first one is purely we're going to practice here is um, arriving, transition into flat position, step into the defensive line and then move into the next phase and we're going to play left and right, left and right. So remembering it's arriving around about last feet of the attacking team, inside foot up and then when we, we look up, find our spot and step in between the defenders. So remembering the, the three orange cones are the first three defenders off the ruck. Um, there's, I've got a ruck at either side. One of them on the left side is with a cone and a ball, and the one on the other end is a blue cone and a white cone. Um, so I'll just quickly play a little bit of this. So we're just practicing arriving, inside foot up, flat enough, step into the defensive line. And then our line is back and then into line. So in this case, it's only about two meters, one meter, but step into the defensive line and then back and into line with play. So we can just go, now this is quite a narrow space. We could do this drill and then spread it out wider. Um, but this is quite important, just practicing backwards and forwards, um, just stringing together what we practiced last week. We're still arriving the same, but the, the, the extra bit here is when we, when we leave the phase, so we get into the defensive line and our first movement, if we've done it properly, we're there as the defense are ready to come. And as the defense come forward, we come forward. So I learned a really good trigger a few years ago that told me if I'm moving forward at the same time, at the same direction as play, at the same time as play goes. So what I mean by that is as the halfback passes back, I'm able to move roughly in that direction, then I'm anticipating play really well. If I'm having to run the other way, so I'm heading towards the defensive line as the ball's coming back, and we all have to do this from time to time, then I've been too late to move. Does that make sense? Yes, no, thumbs up, thumbs down. Questions, comments? Anybody got any questions on that particular drill? Okay, I'll just quickly go through these couple. Um, and then we'll have a questions at the end. Um, let me just share this other one. You see that one, Cam? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, so this one. So this one, I've, I'm a bit low on cones to get quite enough defenders out there, but um. This is practicing just going through the chariot. Um, so using that, arriving in line with the last feet, then Z lining back in behind the halfback as we imagine the ball's coming. And then we go one side to the other. So I won't bore you too long with explaining that because we've been through that. So back and through, inside foot up. This play comes where, now the trick here is, as the halfback's passing the ball, we want to be brushing past. We want to be able to touch them on the backside as we come past them. So we're not going and standing in behind them, three meters behind and waiting. It's a fluid thing as we come along. So it's inside foot up. We think as the halfback, and then the pass goes about now. Again, waiting, and then pass is going now, if we're timing it right. Any questions on that? Okay. I can appreciate this is not the most exciting thing in the world, but um, the only other one I got for you is sorry, Nick. Just on that one, where would yeah. where in the field or what situation do you think would be best beneficial to use that position? Okay, anybody got anything for that? Because there is an answer to that that I have, but I'd like to see if somebody else has got that. Can I speak? Of course, you can speak. 
So the question, just so I'm clear, the question is, when would, would I use the chariot position? Is that the question? Well, well, when you would string up a series of chariot positions together, is that what you're saying, JD? Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, I'd imagine you'd use it from a, like a line out, for example, and just keep moving around, but just want to get your expertise or Pat's purpose. Oh, I'm not saying I'm the expert, but what I'm thinking is if, it, if I can see that the team is going to continually roll around the corner in the same direction, uh, I'm probably just going to do exactly what Nick has done and transition, go A line, jockey, roll out the other side. A line, jockey, roll out. Just keep rolling around. I think it's quite important like, that you're pretty fluid no matter where you're going. Like the reality is, is that um, right at this point in time, the halfback might go the other way, or there might be a mid axe forward who does something they shouldn't, or whatever. So all of these things are important to have in your arsenal, be able to do them at any time. But making sure that you can fluidly adapt them all at any time as well, because someone might do exactly what the textbook or the cones say. That's a great point, mate. Tiana's on the call now. Tiana, I reckon, could have a good observation about this of something that she's working on doing with that particular point, just to put her on the spot. What was your question? Sorry? You weren't listening. So, um, Gappy was saying um, it's important to be fluid mm -hmm. because the halfback won't always do what, what, you, what you expect. So, while I was nicely moving across the park there, well, as nice as I can move, um, the halfback won't always go the way you think. So what is it What is it that you've been doing some work around um, since that first game you had this year around your, um, the, the decisiveness of your positioning? Um, to think instinctively, is that my answer? Yeah, but what was the... Uh, what's, what's worse, to get it wrong or to do nothing? Um, to get it wrong? No, to okay. do nothing. No, 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 to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the point there is, that if you you're better off committing to a position and decisively moving and being fluid, like Gappy says, um, than to sit there flat-footed, stationary, and that's when you get in the way. So if you go, if you think play is going away from you, and you decide to go through the chariot position, um, and then it all of a sudden comes back at you, you're far better off doing that and getting it wrong and turning around and coming back, then you are just sitting halfway between flat-footed and then the halfback turns back and chucks the ball at you, which I know we've all done. But I reckon that's a really, really good point. So it's about being fluid. And the other thing is too, is if you want to look like you're on top of your game and feel like you're on top of your game, if you're fluid with your positioning, it gives you confidence and it gives other people's confidence. So it's, it is important. Now back to JD's original point. Um, Maybe from a line out, it doesn't really matter what it starts from, but it's quite keen, key, uh, common for teams to do exactly what Pat said and just play the same way, where they just go a series of phases straight across the park. And if you're trying to have play come towards you while you do that and be in a traditional flat attack position with play coming at you the whole time, it's really, really hard. You're going to get in the way because it's just so much action happening at you. Whereas if you can just follow... Now, the importance of that arriving square i don't think you should go straight to chariot where you, that's a risk that's the bit where it's risky i think if you just go straight in behind the halfback and wait for a contest to develop i reckon you're in a poor position for that contest but if you arrive in line with the last feet and get your inside foot up so you're just in front of the last feet you're actually in quite a good position to referee a contest if it happens and if it doesn't you step back in behind the halfback and away you go so that's what that z line thing is you're trying to zigzag rather than just run a straight line through from jockey to jockey. Does that make sense? It's a good question. Um, so the only last one I've got here is just, just what it looks like to string, just to mix it up and play a few together. So I've just spread out a few cones. We've got some, the orange ones are defenders, the, the, the blue ones and white ones and the ball. Those are, those are the, the targets for ruck. I've only got a certain width I can play with on the, on the, um, on the phone camera, but, um, you could spread that right across the park. You could also stagger them so teams are either going forward or going back. Although I find positionally it's hardest when there's lots of rugby played on the game line. So I actually reckon it's quite useful practicing when it's really flat like this because when they're just playing phases on the game line, that's when it's hardest not to get in the way. That's when there's the most contests. Whereas when one team's obviously going forward, if the defense is completely dominate, I feel like that's a bit easier. And if the attack completely dominate, then that's that's real easy. So just have a quick look at this one. 
So just using a, always the same inside foot up, step into the defensive line and move back in line with play. And then just playing inside foot up. Now I'm going to use a chariot there. Um, that's one like Gappy was saying, I got a, I got a bit indecisive there. I cocked that one up. Um, whereas I would have been better off keeping fluid. But it's just, it's just nothing complicated here. It's just mixing up the, 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 the philosophies that we've been, um, been talking about. So, um, so that's, that's really as far as I was going to go with those. And those videos will be available as soon as Cam shares them. But does anybody have any, anything they want to ask about that? Any other questions like we've had or something different? Um, Oh, that'll be um that'll be good to take away, Nick, and have a crack at this week. Um, yeah, certainly, certainly those first ones were uh, yeah, something something different to be able to go and do, and just get that mindset of practicing our referee is not something that we you know, that particularly while there's while there's no opportunities to actually go out and do it. It's um it's uh yeah, I'll I'll get those up. I'll get those up tonight and get those distributed. So mm. it's definitely um. Don't underestimate the value of the visualization you do with this sort of stuff. Actually getting out there and just visualizing. So don't just get out there and look at cones. Get out there and imagine it's Rangatawa versus Rotuiti or something and think of the colored jerseys and actually what that might look like because there's actually visualization is a real powerful tool. So it's not just working on your positioning. It's thinking about the sort of things you'll be thinking about when you have to referee some rugby. Because um, we all know what that feels like at the start of the season when we haven't been thinking footy and I think Five it's good to used to do a bit of this stuff is like put those sets of cones that Nick's been showing through these videos at on a field separated out by any and, and number them off. And if you've got kids or a wife or you're bored or things like that, and they go on the yellow number and you've got to go from one to the other and move around and make it like a game. And it might be they might yell out a random number that'll mean nothing to them, but it makes you move from position to position. So it actually makes it a bit more like a game and make it sort of that only takes twenty minutes of them yelling numbers out. Um, and you get quite buggered and it makes it more realistic around and it also helps if you can do it and you're alone or you're comfortable enough with it around your communication around it as well, you might be able to get your arms moving and move people back or stuff like that. So make it as realistic as possible because if going, if you manufacture it, I swear a game will never happen manufactured, so make it a little bit more unreal, unrealistic. Well, that's all I've got, unless anybody wants to say anything else. Any last questions for Nick there, guys? No. Cool. Hey, Nick, thanks so much for that again, mate. Really appreciate that. Um, yeah, like, like, like we said before, it'd be good to, if you know, people can have a crack at those video clip tasks this week, we'll uh, jump to some breakout groups. Um, so I'll send out a reminder for, for our next meeting. Um, and do that next time, and then uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to hear what uh, that feedback is on those positioning drills too. Cool, appreciate that. Okay, guys, uh, look, we'll, what we'll do, speaking of breakout groups, is we'll actually jump into our breakout groups now, so we'll have an opportunity just to catch up. Um, I'm just going to modify the breakout groups just a little bit, just so slightly less people in them this time around. So just an opportunity to catch up with the people that are in your room. Uh, say a quick hi. Uh, we'll just make this five minutes this this time round, and I'll leave the call on at the end if people still want to stay on and catch up afterwards. Um, but yeah, we'll just uh, just got one eye on the clock there, just so that I know that some people are looking to get away after this or something else. So I'll recreate these. So I'm going to pop you into a room, and then I will set a one minute timer when I'm bringing you out. Cool. Um, no, I've got a couple of little things to go. Um, we just like have a little bit of law and stuff, but I know a couple of people are jumping away for the David Galbraith um, thing. So, yeah. I'll say everyone's jumping back in now. Cool. I love Dusto's KFC logo behind there. <laughs> oh, so good, isn't it? Yeah. So good. <laughs> oh, I had to, uh, had to fulfill my contractual obligations. <laughs> I was right? gonna say. Yeah. You don't have get you free KFC for nothing. Have you had a meal since the lockdown? Or I've had two, two in the last three days. Hey, is it is that is it you, JD? I can't see for the reflection off your head. Sorry, what's that, Ned? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody oh. hell! <laughs> Landers, I gotta, I gotta love that. Mo. So, what is Lisette saying about that, Mo, bro? 
I think she, she's pretty keen for me to keep it permanently, isn't it? She that is me. bullshit. You know that <laughs> is bullshit. <laughs> uh, oh, good. Oh, well, uh, I'm going to follow up that um, that with some more jovial stuff, guys. We'll talk about some law. <laughs> uh, um, I, I, yeah. I, law's not my strength. I have to go. That's right. I've yeah. seen you referee, and you're and you're right, Gappy. Yeah, I've I've, I've, and I've seen <laughs> seen TMO, and it's even yeah. It's even, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not, none of the, any of these questions heads or tails answers. Yeah, <laughs> all uh, of them. All of them. <laughs> Case in point, first one. <laughs> uh, so, guys, what, I won't, won't call for answers uh, this time around. I'm just going to go through it. So, these are the questions I popped in the email the other day. Uh, so, handling the ball once the ruck is formed. Uh, no, they can't. However, unless they're able to get their hands on the ball and stay on their feet before the ruck formed. So that's the only person who can. Uh, ruck formed. How's it formed? When at least one player at each team in physical contact over the ball while that ball is on the ground. And what must players on the ground at a ruck do? Uh, so they must move away from the ball and not play it as it emerges. Oh. Now, Last two questions there. How must a player join a ruck? Uh, so being on their feet and from behind their offside line. Um, they can they can join alongside their home homeless player, just not in front of them. Uh, they must bind on to, so their binding must proceed or uh, be simultaneous with contact with any other part of the body. So they can't go charging in and, and tackling or shoulder charging or anything like that. Uh, so there must be a bind and, and particularly from their most recent um, uh, most recent law, um, that's the word I'm looking for right now. Um, yeah, law amendment, uh, not law amendment, sorry. Clarification. Clarification, that's the word I'm looking for. Big, big, big long word saying, we'll see. Uh, not Cameron. Um, yeah, law of clarification was uh, that, yeah, they re really focusing on getting players to bind and drive rather than tackle someone who is in that in that ruck. Uh, lastly, what must happen to, when the ball is clearly available at a ruck? Uh, so referee calls use it. Team winning the ball has five seconds to play the ball away from the ruck. And if they don't do that, there's a scrum. Cool. I uh, just wanted to show you just a couple of things, guys. So I've been ferreting away in the background with some website updates. Um, I'm not going to take you through the whole website, but I encourage you to go in and have a look. And all right. Cool. So you'll find it in a slightly new place now, our ref section. Uh, so under coaches and referees at the top, the referees club. Uh, the side bar will look a bit different as well. Um, some key some key changes. So the calendar is now a calendar and communications page. So all of our, maybe our MailChimp uh, emails end up there as well automatically. So you can jump back in and check them out. If you miss them. Uh, education development page is, is growing as well. Um, all of our Zoom recordings go in there. Other, uh, some other online uh, recordings go in there. These are actually playlists, so you can click on the playlist and, and check them out rather than individual videos. Um, and I've been doing like a little Law Lounge series as well, so you can actually go, and, go in there and check out uh, some of the, the videos that we've been doing and see what's coming up as well. Um, and also gear is on as well. So we've put on a um, uh, what what you can what gear you can get uh, and you, you might notice a couple of small changes on there uh, so jump on and have a quick look um, but also a gear request form so if you, there's gear that you're missing or don't have or need or whatever you can jump on there and fill that out obviously we can't get it to you right now but you can certainly get that in there so we know to get it ready for once we're up and away and there's also stuff that we can purchase so there's merchandise in there as well so right now I've got the um, Caps, the beanies, the whistles in there you can go in and buy as well. So for 15 bucks, it's not a bad, not a bad price for a whistle. Uh, and there's other items in there which I'm getting up by just having a couple of issues with um, images and a couple of things, getting those right in the, in the online shopping cart thing. Um, so we'll get those sorted as well. Um, but yeah, just make sure you do read the instructions carefully just because to avoid getting charged extra shipping, it just... Uh, if you do want it shipped, it's a, bit, a little bit of a process, so make sure you do follow that carefully. And guys, definitely check out our Laws of the Game section as well. Um, the law exam, law test is in there, um, and any updates and links will go through there too. So, plenty to see and do. Um, 
So make sure you go and jump in and check out that website and have a little bit of a play around. And uh, lastly, just a bit of general business. So a um, bit of a competition for May. So we had our previous one, I got on Sam on um, the glorious effort there. Um, so for the May competition, so I've got another, um, got another Thunder to, to, uh, in Matt Black to, to get rid of here. Um, so this one, literally just send in a photo. So just if you active or whatever you're doing, um, just something that you're wearing some referee club gear. So either a training tee, polo jacket, jersey socks, whatever, um, shorts, um, just get a photo in of, of, of you, what you're doing out there in your bubbles and maybe just a short caption about what you've been doing. Again, we'll take those photos in, we'll draw them at the end of the month and for a sim simply a setting a photo in, um, you could get one of these. So, um, yeah, could be uh, a nice, quick and easy, pretty cool thing to do. Um, other things, if you haven't already, um, register, you can get your registration done now. Uh, that's, we're still taking those and so we can actually be ready for the season once we get going. Um, if you didn't get the blue card training done, so if you didn't attend in person, uh, you can actually do that now as well. I've um, uploaded the video along with a uh, little test as well, so just to make sure you did watch the video. So the whole video is there and then a few questions about, uh, about the video. Um, and then that can, you can do it that way too. Um, sign into appointment and have a, have a bit of a play around. So you would have got a uh, link to that when, when you registered. Um, so the law exam, the law tests, again. Well, Kim, just, just go yeah, back to the uh, yeah. Rugby Smart. Go for it. Um, then we've got a chance to attend one of the live sessions part yep. of it. Yeah, good question. Still to come. Yes, so uh, all of the rest of those live sessions were obviously um, postponed. Uh, with COVID, um, now they'll be uh, looked to be rescheduled uh, prior to um, rugby starting, or I know that there's some background work going on with NZR and potentially some online options there. But at this at this point, we would look to reschedule them because uh, we do need to make sure we get refs and coaches through that before. Um, would we before do it in house just with refs? Uh, probably not. No. Okay. No, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd likely um, do it with, with coaches. Cool. Um, all right. And also, guys, making sure we're ready for our season. So fitness, strength and conditioning, pregnancy refereeing. There's plenty of resources on our um, uh, rugby toolbox website as well. And uh, also just thinking about your season ahead and if you were looking to... Um, if you had ambitions or if you had really ambitions for your own personal development, uh, get in touch with a referee coach. All the, all the referee coach emails and contact details are on the website. Uh, if you're looking to establish a plan or need some help with goal setting or planning um, for your season, then uh, our referee coaches want to work with you. And uh, it's, you know, and I, I would, I'd probably speak for all of them on here, um, is that they welcome uh, content made from a referee, uh, you know, to show that that drive and that ambition and that that, that, that desire. Uh, it's a bit harder the other way around. So, yeah, if you you're coming to our coaches or any of our coaches will will look to help you. Absolutely, uh, there's plenty of referees and coaches working together already for the season ahead. Um, so now's a great time to start establishing those relationships. Um, and if you don't know. Any, who the coaches are or uh, want to be put in touch with one, you can get in touch with me as well, get in touch or get in touch with Ian Wedderburn, who's our uh, referee coach coordinator, um, and we can uh, get you teed up with one um, that way as well. So good opportunities to, to get these sort of things done now. Uh, cool. And lastly, again, a lot of uh, got a lot of videos going up onto our YouTube channel. So all of these Zoom uh, meetings, um, resources creating again check out the youtube channel subscribe to it so you get those updates as well uh i'll actually put uh, my next thing to do is i'm going to put all these slides um that i have here up on there so you can actually get into the slideshows and access these links as well nice and easily um not on youtube on our website so yeah uh, again be sure to check it out it's a great way to um, stay in touch and and to get the lowdown and stuff uh, as far as rugby is concerned um it is no, the update is that there is no solid update at the moment. 
Um, the I'm just on my share there. Um, at the, since I shared that that rubric with you of the alert levels and what happens at each of those, uh, there's there's been nothing uh, solid from NZR. Uh, and as Bay Plenty Rugby, we really are following their lead um, between them and the obviously central government as well. Um, I know on Thursday there's an announcement around uh, the likelihood of when we're going to be moving out of uh, level three. So that obviously might have a bit of a bearing on that. Um, but uh, long story short is that no, we can't have contact rugby at alert level two. Uh, we should be able to have uh, at alert level one. Well, we're going on the assumption that we can. Um, and so we would still, once we switch to a level, alert level one, we'd then need a few weeks lead in uh, before our season starts, obviously, to get back to um, contact training for teams and everything like that, and then get a season established. Uh, so if you can imagine, you're probably not going to have a season, you're not going to have a season kickoff date uh, within four weeks of going back to alert level one. Um, so if you bear that in mind, like we, we, just have no, we just have no idea when alert level one is going to be. So we're just running off that, that, that uh, proviso for now. Um, Pat, I know you're on the call. Do you have anything else to add to that that you, that you wanted to? Uh, no, not really. Um, you, you did right. Until we get an alert level one date, <clears throat> excuse me, we've, we've got no idea of start dates. And you're right on the four weeks. Uh, uh, my thinking, though, was have we given any thought at, for the referees as to whether or not they want to start doing some group fitness training sessions together once we get into level two because for the options available so long as we practice the social distancing and can keep a record <coughs> excuse me yeah we hadn't discussed it but certainly that that'll be on the cards so we'll, we'll once we once we know when we're moving to alert level two what that's going to look like um then we'll look to yeah schedule schedule those things where and how and in, 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 in the right way Uh, did anyone have any questions just in general uh, the, about Return to Rugby or just anything that we've brought up tonight? Yeah, Cam, Stu Boots. Um, hey, Boots. i just watching on the news tonight. The, um, the New Zealand Rugby Union are uh, looking at reducing the number of staff saving money. Mm. What sort of impact or is that impact likely on the Bay of Plenty Rugby Union and the likes of you guys and your jobs? Yeah, so NZR had under, undertaken a review through McKinsey, um, which was pretty well publicised you know, prior to the, uh, the coronavirus. Um, and I, I think what this coronavirus has done now is really forced their hand with a lot of that. So the review was underway, that restructuring was all underway uh, in that sense. Um, we we don't know what that looks like in terms of how how NZR affects the way that they work with us at the moment. Uh, I know that a lot of that's coming out this or that that is really you know, coming out with them this week. Um, so we don't know just yet what that's going to look like, and of course that might 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 take some time. Um, as far as the Bay of Plenty Rugby is concerned, we've I mean we've got plans in place to uh, I mean we it's we, we're continuing at the moment on 80%, so four day weeks at the moment uh, in terms of our um, our staffing, and of course that's that's through to through to June. Uh, of course, you know, whatever happens at the moment, we're not too sure. Um, but we're going on the proviso that we're going to be ready for rugby and put things in place and and carry on as. Um, and, you know, with the season as, uh, as as we need to. So yeah, so long, long story short, boost is that we just yeah we just don't know just yet what 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 effect what effect it's going to have on us. Um, but we need to just carry on and on the proviso that we don't you know that there may there may there may or may not be you know direct change. Well, particularly for us as as referees, there may not be there may not be any change. Um, and then yet there could be significant change. So in any room between. Uh, is that a vague enough answer? <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. 
Thank you. Cool. All good. Dust, are you still eating? Okay. Fair enough. All right, guys. Hey, thanks so much for, for joining again tonight. Um, 26 on the call tonight. That's awesome. Um, we do have a Kahoot lined up as well. So it's a, it's a random selection of law, law questions tonight. So if you do want to stick around and get your law brain on, um, it should be pretty fun. For those of you who have been staying on for their hoots, it has been, has been a hoot. Hey, Sean. Um, so you will need a, a separate device. Uh, for the one uh, compared to the one that you're currently watching this zoom on uh, so whether that's another uh, laptop or a phone or anything um, Other than that, it's been really good to see you all again uh, I'll, I'll be in touch around our next meeting and uh, along some resources as well as um, Yeah, as well as the videos from Nick. So cool. All good. Thanks very much <laughs>